mean, uh, a number of things. The world has not gone 4G. Uh, 4G, first and foremost, is principally in the United States and Canada, and it will happen over time, and I know there are auctions happening in Columbia too. But that, like any other major infrastructure investment, will take a period of time. And so you take a look at the global marketplace and you say, 3G, 2G. And in some places, 2G is still the only viable solution that's actually there. And so, uh, for sure, Latin America has gone 3G in a fairly significant way. But 2G is still a very credible technology and throughout Latin America, throughout Africa, throughout Asia Pacific, throughout many parts of Europe as well. So you take a look at things from a global perspective. I know it's interesting to try to but it's not. When you take a look at that, you go, 3G, 2G, there's still a tremendous amount of market there. And remember what I said earlier on, this is the first year that more smartphones are going to be sold into Latin America than feature phones. And so the first thing that people are looking for when they go into smartphones is messaging and connection to social networks. And that particular regard, 2G, 3G do a great job. And it allows you to actually hit a very accessible price point uh, to be able to mass adopt. So number one for memory on the device, specifically for applications, we're growing that on all the brand new devices. So for example, on the new products that we're launching today, there's 512, 512 megabits specifically for application capability, megabyte, bigger part, uh, for applications. And so much more than any other products we have. In fact, it's, it's similar memory to some of our higher tier portfolio products. So we're trying to develop all the capabilities, the higher tier BlackBerry portfolio, into these new entry level products. We, 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 we launched Android application support on Playbook, Playbook with 2.0, and there's certainly like, literally thousands of those applications on there. It, it's gone as well. You're very happy with how it's actually gone. But my view on it is, it, it'll be an issue. I mean, the, the question that we typically had was the volume of applications. Really, we try to say it's, quant it's quality, not quantity, right? But at the end of the day, we get into this weird discussion in terms of they have more applications than you do, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And so we try to satisfy that by saying, okay, so great, we're supporting Android applications on Playbook, away you go. Now, what's interesting, we've done that, and there are thousands of applications available on Playbook. You want to know what the most popular applications downloaded on Playbook actually are? Not Android. The most popular applications are actually the gaming applications, because they use the native SDK and it's a beautiful experience. If anybody's got playbooks on there, I invite you to actually download any number of EA games available on the platform. And it's near game-like, near game console-like experience. We showed that at BlackBerry, uh, BlackBerry World, and we're very excited about that. So we do it, it's available there, but actually the most popular applications are available on the game console. I mean, but it's gonna, I mean you, you can kick me if I go a little too far, but you know, we, we made a very, very historically different shift for us at BlackBerry World. Meaning, as a company, we really haven't talked about future things at BlackBerry. We really haven't. We try to keep it in the present. But I would say that, um, you know, with some of the changes that we've made, you know, we've tried to be a lot more candid and clear about what we're doing today and tomorrow. And I thought Orson was, was particularly, you know, expansive on that at BlackBerry World to say, look, we're, we're working on some amazing things with regards to BlackBerry 10, and we wanted to show the world some of those things. And the plan is, as we get closer to the second half of the year, to have a steady stream of updates with regards to how we're doing on that one. So stay tuned, is the answer. Maybe I want to point out that we will show in the demonstrations later, they, they can see the details, but what we will do is the user actively has to launch the mobile hotspot capability. So you select in your in your connectivity capabilities, you select mobile hotspot, and then you can put in a certain password, and then the device that wants to make use of the mobile hotspot capability has exactly so you have to exactly enter the same password in order to connect. But the question I understand the, the question was what are the operators? So 
it will either depend on the operator, it will either go down, use your, your megabyte, say you have a new megabyte plan. If you have an unlimited plan, it's likely you will have to have a separate uh, service that would enable the Wi-Fi hotspot, which is a fantastic experience, by the way. Uh, it's just like any Wi-Fi hub you have on your phone. Very fast. It uses the processor of your computer, not of, not of the BlackBerry. So it uses the network connection, but uh, very, very fast. And honestly speaking, when you take a look at some of the the growth trends that we've been seeing in our business, I mean, it's, and I mentioned this, 46% of the BlackBerry users in Mexico are under the age of 24 years of age. Like, we're seeing a tremendous growth in BlackBerry amongst a number of segments in, in the consumer marketplace, not the least of which is, you know, 12 to 16 year old users. And so, kids getting their first phone, often, it's a BlackBerry. Right? They're not going from feature phones then to smartphones. Their first phone is getting to be a smartphone. And and at least speaking, the parents want to have some assurance that, you know, their kids are going to be using it for all the right reasons. And so there's an ability to actually say, you know what, I don't want to have my child receive SMS messages from anything other than some specific users. I don't want them to text just anybody. I want them to be able to do certain things, limit their browsing sites, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So I think the parental controls thing was a very smart move on our part. And I'm not saying that just because Matias is sitting beside him. I think in general, what I've tried to outline here is that we really we put a lot of consideration into uh, using this OS, using the device, add the device with the new OS. We did a lot of consumer research in various markets around the world. And I think this feature that we finally decided to bring to the market, in our mind, is really an end of what we have seen in the requirements of changing usage patterns. And I think as it was outlined here, especially with the user base, getting younger and younger in a lot of countries, there was a strong requirement uh, to put some control to really allow fun use, but safe use for We certainly stay focused on the on the competition, but you know, honestly, you, you can't you can't obsess about that. I, I find that I'm, in my 13 years with the company, I find that the most productive way who you really want to focus on is not the competition, but focus on your customer, focus on your market, right? Find out what they want and figure out how to actually deliver the best experience that aligns with their needs. And when I think about Argentina, without a doubt, I mean, Wally mentioned this across Latin America, that he knows this on muy social. Right? In Argentina, very much so. Very much so, which is really one of the reasons why BBM has been on in a big, big way. So, we, we don't obsess over the competition. We're aware of it, by all means. But we try to stay focused on our customers. That's number two question. Number one question was, when are we going to be building this in Argentina? And we're working on that right now. Like, if, if you only knew some of the phone calls that I've been working on over the past 24, 48 hours, I would tell you that we're, we're close. We're very, very close. Um, and I would say this, your first question was, is our strategy to actually compete or to actually be leaders? That was your first question. And, and I'm looking at the audience, and many of you have known me for many, many years. Many years. So I, I choose these next words very, very carefully, right? We don't do anything half-hearted as a company. You're going to be in the marketplace, you play 100% every single day. You win. You don't be in the game just to be in the game. You're in the game to win. Two years ago, we became the number one smartphone in Latin America. You have not relinquished that position in eight quarters. Make sure you write that down. I do not like to be in a game just to play. I like to play and win. So, and I can tell you that's the entire organization. Thorsten has the entire company laser focused on making sure that we don't just be a competitor in the marketplace. 
But we take our position, rightfully so, at the leadership position. We created this industry, guys. When we launched BlackBerry in 1999, we're not about to go softly into the good night. We plan on coming back and coming back hard. What are we doing on application developers? What are we doing on application developers? Were you at BlackBerry World? You were at BlackBerry? You, you know the answer to this question. Like, you know, at the end of the day, when have you ever seen us as a company provide a device ahead of an OS launch specifically for the development community? Like, we've, we've learned lessons. And the lessons that we've learned is we needed to do a much better job supporting the application development community. And so we, you know, frankly, are doing unprecedented things to get the right support, the right people, the right systems, the right procedures in place to do a much better job in the application development community. In Latin America, we're partnering with governments like the Colombian government to make sure that we bring the right tools locally in Colombia and a number of other markets to make sure we're spurring local application development capabilities. Now, when I say that, it's not only about creating the local applications and selling them in Colombia, it's about creating the local applications that are relevant in Colombia and that can also be sold on a global stage. In over 175 countries through over 650 carriers to provide that global platform. And so I thought at BlackBerry World, a number of application partners got up and did a very good job saying, actually, RIM has learned its lesson. They've actually provided much better tools. I was able to create a, an application on the new platform in less than 24 hours, providing me with better support on this one. We're very, very committed to the application development community, guys. Like, we're, we're taking some very aggressive steps to make sure that we become the best partner out there for application developers anywhere in the world.